Today we're going to talk about the basic blues, three chord blues. We're going to start out in E, because that's going to be kind of the easiest one to get our E minor pentatonic scale going with. And it's three very simple chords. E7, which is 0201, open, open. So it's like your E major, but you pull that second fret of the D string out of there, and you get this bluesy chord. Now think about an A major. We're going to pull the middle one out of that, and we're going to have an open on the fifth string. 2, O, 2, open. That's A7. So we got an E7. We got an A7. Now our third chord for this key of E is going to be a B7. That's going to be a 2 here on the 5th string, A string. 2, 1, 2. Then open on the B string. And then 2 on the little E string. 2, 1, 2, open, 2. So we have three chords. E7. We have A7, which its bass note is on the 5th string, whereas the E's bass, string, bass note was on the 6th string. A7 and B7. B7 also, its bass note on the 5th string. You want to try to mute that big string in the case of this chord. So we have E7, A7, B7. Now, a, a simple 8-bar blues would be 4 beats of the 1st chord, 4 beats of the 2nd chord, and you'll do that twice. Then you go to what's called the turnaround. That's that five chord they call that B in this case. Down to the four chord, to the one chord, to the five chord. So that's eight different measures of different chords. So the first one is E7. We're going to call that the one chord. That's our home bass chord. That's what we're starting out with. O two, O one, open, open. You could also put a little three here on the second string. You want to make that have a little different sound to it, a little different inversion. We have A7. You could also do A7 like this, where you do the, the three twos from an A chord, but hit a three on the bottom. That would be a different inversion of the A7. You could also do the open two, open two with a three on the bottom. So three different ways you could do that one, and a couple different ways we could do this E7. And then B7, if you want an alternate for that one, we could do, which is barring the twos all the way down and then two on the fifth string, and then four, and then two, and then four, and then two. Kind of mimics that open A7 shape, just becomes a bar, bar and then it becomes a moving chord. Just like the E7, it becomes a moving chord in this way. Now the B7, we have to simplify a little bit. We're gonna look at it as like those four notes, and then that four note thing in the middle four strings, that becomes a moving chord shape. So we're going to start out with uh, one, two, four on the E7, four on the A7, and this is the one chord, like I say, this is the four chord. Now we have the turnaround, five chord, four, and one, back to five. One more time through, we got one to four, that's E7 to A7. Seven, which is the five chord, A7, the four chord, E7, the one chord, and B7, the five chord. Let's try that again. usually it kind of finishes off a of blues tune pretty good now think about if we were going to be up in a different key we're going to use those same types of chords so say if we were in G we're going to have this G7 which is barring all the threes so three five three four three three 
now we could jump down here to this C7. 3, 5, 3, 5, 3. Or a lot of times you'll see kind of going back to, in this case, it's like a C chord, but it's got that pinky on the third fret. That's that movable shape that kind of came out of that open B7 shape. In this case, it'd be a C7. So it'd be G7, C7. And here I'm just muting the big string. I'm not playing a note there. Back to G7, which is the one chord in this case, four chord. Now we're gonna go up two frets to get the turnaround chord, the five chord. Back to four, and one chord, and then to the five. And then we start over again. One, four, one, four, five, four, and one to the five. And hit one last one on the one. So when you can do it like that with those movable chord changes, you could do it in any key. We could be in B flat. Here's a B flat note right in the sixth fret. And of course, you can mix up how you do the strums. It's just basically about how many beats are you having to fill. So once again, this is an eight bar blues because there's eight different chords in the full progression. Like this is the fifth measure. So once again, the reason we call this an eight bar blues is because we have eight measures of four beats each and that is the full progression and it starts over again. So the first measure is one, the second measure or bar when you say eight bar blues bar is measure a measure of four beats in this case so first measure four beats second measure or you can say third bar here fourth bar now the fifth bar is where we start that turnaround here's the sixth bar here's the seventh bar and the eighth bar we start over again one chord four chord Five chord. Now one chord to the five chord. So just knowing all that stuff, you could play in any key a three chord one four five blues. And that's, so that's basically how all of these three chord blues songs work. Is they have a one and a four. You know, you could also do the four like that, and you could do the five like this. That would give you a little alternate way. It's basically just about, there's like these three chords. And they just go together really well, and that's where a lot of the blues songs come from. Okay, and they go really well with this minor pentatonic scale in whatever key you're in. So say if we're down here in open, let's go back to open for a second, this would be E. Open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three. So that's your first position. That's the one that would work for this. And you can see there's little tricks where you're going to slide into a new position out of that basic first position. So we'll talk about all that kind of stuff too. One of the main ones is on this third string, the G string. You take that second fret note, slides to four, you get that little three below it. And then when you slide down, you pull off and hit that two here. That two is the E. So that is a like a root note. That is like a home bass note. So when you get up to that, you can slide on back and hit one of those E notes to have kind of a sense of sound of resolve, you know. So, this thing also becomes a chord. And you can use those twos there on the second and third string. There's a lot of stuff you can do with that. But it kind of comes from the way these two positions combine. So 
once again, we got our E minor pentatonic first position. Now let's look how you could combine into the next position. So we've got the position by itself. And there's your E is what we started with, and this is the E on the bottom. You can play, of course, this note beyond that, but it's good to know that the E there is your root note. If you wanted a sound of resolve. But when you want extra notes to play with, that's when you want to know all the notes of the position, and you also want to know how we can move into higher positions to get more notes easily. Okay, now let's look at, um, here's the second position of E minor pentatonic for whoever wants to get into that one. This one's a bit more difficult. People usually just use this higher area of that kind of thing, and they don't really use these notes down here too, too much because they're a bit more difficult. See how kind of, to me I call it like bulky. It's kind of like too much, too much kind of work necessary to make s smooth like flowing notes, you know. Of course you want to work with it because you want to get all of these different positions really down well. But let's look at the third position. This one is the one that becomes the next main combining positions spot. So we have five, seven, three times, and then four, seven. So it's a little shift back to that four, and then a shift back up, five to eight, and five, seven. Here's where we get into the next main combining position spot. And it's good to know that that and your big one, that's the E. So even though you're starting five seven five seven five seven, it's good to know that's the E, that's seventh fret of the A string. Think about like, like born under a bad sign. See how that's like the resolve note in that whole thing? And that's because that's in that scale of E minor pentatonic. So we got five sevens. We're gonna come up to this nine up here on the D string. Then seven nine. Then I'm gonna switch to first finger here to make the rest of this play off easy. So that's eight, ten, and twelve in the B string, up to ten, twelve down here. So with those two positions, you have from open all the way to seventh fret, and then you have in the lower register all the way up to the octave of the E. And then everything just starts over again at that point. See, that's the same. So that was that same combining positions riff we did down here, up on its octave. Okay, so it's good to know all of the positions of the pentatonic scale, so let's look at that. Here's the first one again. Here's the second one, three, five, two, five, two, five, two, four. And then to stay in position, you want to use your middle finger and pinky on these two. But as you see, when you start playing it with this way, it becomes a lot easier to use the first and third fingers, but that takes some maneuvering. And if you're really just trying to play the scale kind of correctly with the right fingers, it would be like this. But that's not how you're going to want to phrase things when you're playing like a blues. So keep in mind that sometimes the way you would play a scale to keep your fingers where each finger has its own fret, which is a good rule of thumb on all scales you're going to play on guitar, Sometimes it doesn't really come out that way. Like when you want to play something that feels smooth and easy, you know, you don't want to fight with these more difficult fingers all the time. You want to be using them so you can do stuff that involves them, but you know what I'm saying. So anyway, here goes the next one. Five sevens, three times, four seven, five eight, five seven. But what is used more is these five sevens up to this nine, seven, nine, eight, ten, twelve, ten, twelve. But let's look at this fourth position then. This is seventh fret, seven and tens. Seven, ten, twice, then seven, nine, seven, nine, and then middle finger eight, ten, seven, ten. So seven, ten, twice, seven, nine, twice, eight, ten. 710. Now we have a fifth one here. This is going to be 10, 12, 10, 12, 
and they're so close up here you can kind of use the first and third fingers the whole time if you want you could do it this way and get those stick to that rule of thumb it's good to do it that way too but when you're getting more into kind of like the heat of the battle how you would play a tune in real life when these frets are closer together you have more options you can reach easier with like like i say like the first and third fingers are sometimes you even misplace this one because you can get a further reach on these and sometimes you need that finger you don't need the finger that would play that's not really the job this one needs to do when it's going it needs power and stuff and that's where your ring finger is like more powerful with those other fingers behind it in my opinion anyway then like the, the pinky some people use the pinky to me it doesn't it doesn't go up there as it doesn't hit the spot like it needs to like this one has more power but everybody's different. So see, sometimes, and this would be like a Jimi Hendrix kind of thing. He's not going to use the fingers that necessarily would belong to those frets if you did it all like that, like I was saying down here. But when you get up in these closer frets, you have you need more power and you have more reach. So even though he's not bending with this more powerful finger, he can still get it done. He's got a finger behind it still to help out. But he's got this other one that can reach up here. Plus you get in stuff like... You can even get into those kind of things where you have the middle fingers doing the bending. You get a note underneath it. You could be doing that stuff like this too. With the third and... Third and fourth fingers. Sometimes there's even stuff like where you get into like a... You'd have like a bend here, a seventh fret. But then you'd have a pinky way down here in the nine. You come back to this seven before you even let the bend go down. It'd be like one of those chicken picking kind of things. You want to know the five minor pentatonic positions. start over with number one again so you want to know those but you want to know those in each key too so here would be like G starts on that one now one thing to think about is what note did that end on if you remember how the next shape goes you can be like oh that was a middle finger on that new note just like down here so if I know it was three to six then I can go middle finger on that six and just play that next position it keeps it all in line like a big old jigsaw puzzle now this was the later note of that one, so what was position three? Three things in a row here. Where'd that one end? Okay, where'd the new one start? Where did that one end? Where did that last one start? Here would be like in the key of G, first position, combining positions. I'll use that middle finger to shoot me in there to help that out. So minor pentatonic, super key to working with these three chord blues progressions. You can almost never go wrong when you're playing the notes of the minor pentatonic. Say if we had a G thing, and you're playing these, you're never going to go wrong. See why it's important to see those moving positions you have a lot a lot more access to notes to keep your melodies that you're feeling in your head going and not running out of room but anyway if you know those positions the next step is going to be keeping track of what notes go with the first chord what notes go with the second chord what notes go with the third chord and trying to be able to play some of those that match. Now your ear can do a lot of that job, but if you think about it, you're doing some of the math at the same time, you're gonna go way farther than people that are only just guessing all the time. So I'm gonna take a little break. We're gonna have some progressions. We're gonna get down. You guys are gonna try soloing in some different keys. We're gonna talk about a 12 bar blues in a minute here too. I'll be right back. Thanks a lot. 
So that's a little example of how to use the pentatonic minor and try to follow those notes around of the chords going on there. So when I did the first chord, see that is the root note that goes with that G, that is a G note. So that goes with that G7 chord. And you just use the other notes of the scale around the note that you're kind of following to get into following the changes a bit. See, like, say, when I come down to this, that C7 chord, well, here's the C note. It's on the string just below the G note was. So it's like. And then we're back to the G. Back to the C, the four chord. Here's the D chord, or more commonly, you'll see it slid up to right there. That'd be the four again, the one, Five. So let me give you let me give you a little more ideas on that. See that last one there? That was the five chord the very end of the progression so it's good to know where all these notes are within your scale of the minor pentatonic so once again you got your ones here you got your fours here you got your fives here or you could look at it like this so and then when you get up in this position remember how we have the combining positions here's your one here's your four Here's your five. So I'm going to work in this position. I'm going to work this one, four, and five. So you can see how that's done there. Now when we get into here, we get into that little flat fifth. So let's talk about that flat fifth. We're gonna add that to the scale now. So we have three, six, three, four, five, three, five, three, five, six, three, six, three, six. And if we were down in E, it would just be open and three, open one, two, open two, open two, three, oh three, oh three. So it's good to learn those in all of the different positions as well. Here goes a tricky one. And the last one. Okay, so you want to know the, all of those and all of the different keys and all the different positions and everything. Now let's talk about a 12 bar blues. This is going to be, let's say, we'll, we'll stay in the key of G. Now in a 12 bar blues, we're going to go one chord, four chord, and one chord twice. And then four chord twice. Back to one chord twice. And then we have our five chord, our turnaround to the four, and then one to the five. One. Let's think about that chord there. So instead of just doing a regular seven chord in the C there, we could do a C nine. Three, three, two, three, three, three. 
kind of a funkier one than just a regular dominant seven. So one chord, four chord with a nine, one chord twice, four chord twice, back to one chord twice, five chord, four, now here we can go one, four, one, five. Goes a turn around. Then we're gonna go one four one five quicker. Now here's a little change to the dominant seven turnaround chord. You pull that pinky out, you get an extra three over here five four three three. Now you have an augmented chord, which can be a cool alternative to your standard seven chord to go back to the beginning there. Okay, so that has been a bit about playing the blues. You can do that stuff in every key. Just know where your blues scale goes, where you're combining positions. Start thinking about where your one and your four and your five is and start recognizing what, the, what those chords place is in each progression. Start getting used to the sound of them. Like for instance, when you hear the turnaround chord, it's really unmistakable that that's what's going on. It's something else is happening from your two basic first chords. So you know that's the beginning of your turnaround. And often, no matter how you turn it around, it ends with that same turnaround chord before it starts over again. Almost like it, so everybody knows that you're starting over again. And like I say, a lot of these things, you're going to end on that one chord. You want to eventually, you want to we'll talk about like arpeggios. But that's how people get some of those nice riffs. Oh, one last thing. Here is an alternative for this dominant seven chord. Not a lot of people do this one, but this is a fun one. Five, four, five, six on the big string. It's still at A7. All right, well, I'm Damon Wood. Thanks for watching. We will talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.